What's up, y'all? Cooper Allen here. Pretty pumped to share this with you guys. I got an amazing opportunity to interview Staff Sergeant Jennifer Thoreau, who is an active duty Marine. I just kind of talked to her about becoming a Marine and her 17 years of service. That's one of the coolest things I've ever gotten to do. So here's the interview. Check it out. Hope you enjoy it. My name's Staff Sergeant Thoreau. I've been in the Marine Corps for almost 17 years now. I didn't really intend to join the Marine Corps after college because I, I kind of got kicked out of college um, at 19. So um, no, I know I'm not the only one. So I'm not, I'm okay with saying that. And I didn't know what I wanted to do with my life. Actually, I was in a lot of trouble because I had a, a full music scholarship, a full ride to Simpson University in Redding, California. And I just made some, um, I didn't make smart choices. So that's why I got kicked out. So I was living, you know, one friend, one week, the next friend, the next week, whatever. And then uh, I also got kicked out of my house. So I was kind of in a crappy situation. I was working at McDonald's. Nothing wrong with working at McDonald's. I just, that's not something that I saw myself doing for the rest of my life. So one day my dad called me and he's like, hey, I saw a, a military band. You should go talk to a recruiter. I was like, okay, dad, I'll go do that. And I did. I went and I talked. And I had an interview, I had a, an audition, and they're like, okay, we'll take you. Then from there, you know, 17 years later, there's a lot I'm sure we'll discuss, but that's kind of how I got started. So you went to college for, for music, what instrument, or just music in uh, general? For flute, flute performance. Very so nice. So my plan was to, um, my dream before the Marine Corps growing up was to um, play in movie soundtracks. That's what I just had a passion for. Well, I never did, but I always wanted to be in a movie soundtrack musically. And mm -hmm. so my life, you know, God had a different plan. So, and I'm okay with that. Well, I'll tell you what's incredibly impressive is, you know, have a series of bad decisions or whatever, maybe get, get, get picked out of school. And it's easy to keep mm -hmm. going down that path, but you totally, I mean, did the ultimate 180 and are now doing what is arguably the most noble profession out there. So that's pretty, yeah. that's pretty awesome. I'm, I'm, I'm very thankful for the way that my life turned out. So was it, I know you said you had a conversation with a Marine recruiter. Is that kind mm -hmm. of, was that the deciding factor in choosing the Marines over any other branch of service? Or was there still thought about, you know, maybe, maybe this, maybe that, maybe that, and you landed on Marines? A lot of people ask, like, you know, why'd you, why did you join? Like, you know, have you wanted to, you know, join the military ever since you were little? You know, some people do. But for me, I didn't have a plan whatsoever for my life. My dad said, hey, try the music program out or whatever. And I sat outside, I made an appointment with the Navy recruiter. I just remember um, the Marine recruiter just like slowly walking out being like, hey, what's going on? What you doing? I was like, I'm waiting for the Navy. I I'm, I'm want to talk about joining. And he's like, well, you know what? We're open. Why don't you step in a step into our office? And I was like, okay. I wasn't too knowledgeable about the, the armed forces and the differences. So I just walked into his office. Then that from there on, he had me sold and when he found out that I was a musician, he was like really interested because recruiters are always seeking out uh, musicians and uh, for the Marine Corps. So That's that amazing. was pretty exciting. Yeah. Yeah. And so that kind of leads into the next question. It sounds like you really that that bond is so strong that you form with these people. And over 13 weeks, you know, you go in and you probably don't know a single person. Right. And then no. by mm -hmm. the end of 13 weeks, it's more than just best friends with these other people people you know you're kind of a family can you touch on that process and kind of what what that means to you and how kind of special that process is I, I'll tell you what I still talk with about frequently about five of the recruit training platoon mm -hmm. um to the 17 years later you know and you know we may not see each other <laughs> in 17 years but when we pick up the phone and talk to each other or we text or FaceTime it's like zero time has gone by. It's a weird feeling. It's a weird feeling to not see somebody, you know, in 17 years, but you pick up the phone and, and you guys are best friends. It's awesome. And that's the bond that we have, even as, you know, Marines in the Marine Corps. Like I've made some of the best friends I feel like I will ever have in my entire life. I feel like I have made some of them in the Marine Corps and the different situations that I've been in where I've crossed paths with them, you know, whether it be like on deployment or you know, on the drill field or at OCS, Officer Candidate School. It's an awesome feeling to know that you have, you know, brothers and sisters that are always going to have your back. And there's a lot of comedy that goes on too. There's a lot of yeah. good times, you know, and that's what, you know, the bonds, you know, we, a lot of the times we bond through the tough times 
because sometimes when like things are horrible or miserable or hot or you still have those Marines around you. And sometimes they'll crack jokes. The comedy is heightened, definitely. Something that wouldn't be so funny if it was just a normal day, like becomes incredibly hilarious. And then you talk about it for years and years. I'll remember that one time. And those are some good times. (laughs) Do you have a favorite story like that that you can share? (laughs) There's just so many. I do remember this one time when I was a a brand new drill instructor. And everybody's watching you to see how, you know, you're going to be. These recruits were waiting with their laundry bags. And there was this one recruit that came out like by themselves because they're always supposed to be in a buddy pair. I remember starting to sprint after that that recruit. Ah, you're not, you know, where's your buddy? And tried to run after them and like blast them and freak them out or whatever. And I remember it was just like life was in slow motion for like five seconds because I jumped over the laundry bags and then my foot got caught in like the string. And then I was just like, no. And I just fell down and like ate it in front of all the drill instructors it was the most embarrassing thing you know but at least i put a smile and like you know they got a good laugh little things like that that give like relief you got to be able to laugh at yourself you know i I don't care (laughs) who you are i don't care how you know calm cool or hard you're supposed to be that's that laughter is important can you kind of roughly kind of take us through where you've been what you've done graduated boot camp uh 2006 well i'm in the uh, quantico marine corps band you have to go through uh, Marine combat training, and then you go to your MOS school. So mine would be the the Naval School of Music in uh, Norfolk, Virginia for, I think it's either six to nine months, I can't remember. And once you graduate there, you go to your first duty station. And my very first duty station was Miramar, California. So got there, you know, my very first performance was the Rose Bowl Parade, and that was awesome. So that was like, uh, yeah, it was my first one. I was so lucky. That was an experience. And then in 2008, we got tasked to go on a deployment to Iraq. So what I learned about, you know, camaraderie and family and like serving your country. I had an opportunity to go to Iraq and I went there for nine months. I was a drill instructor for three years in Paris Island. The Marine Corps Recruit Depot in San Diego was my next duty station after I was done being a drill instructor. Did the um, Marine, the Marine Band in San Diego. After that tour was over, we went to Camp Pendleton. Every other year, the band joins 1st Battalion, 5th Marines to go to France, the Battle of Bellawood. So we go there and we play with the German uh, Army Band, the French Band. It's a ceremony that they hold each year in Bellawood. It's one of our Mm -hmm. most prominent battle sites and battles in the Marine Corps. And so that was really solemn. That was really special. So after that, that Pendleton to Quantico. And I think last year I was augmented as a sergeant instructor at Officer Candidate School to train officer candidates to become Marine officers. And then I have a couple more years left. And then I will be hopefully attending nursing school. Amazing. Yeah, that's unbelievable. What a yeah. life. Being in the Marine Band, how, how often do y'all perform? You know, every band is different. Marine Band in San Diego, on both recruit depots, because there's only two um, places that make Marines, is Paris Island, South Carolina, and San Diego. Mm-hmm. And so when I was in the San Diego um, band, we would support the recruit graduations, their ceremonies, you know, we'd march them, you know, um, we'd support like the family day with with music. So that would be a weekly occurrence. Every so often we'd have one of the other two bands in the local area cover one of our graduations and we would go to support some military event in Monterey, California or San Jose, California. And we just are able to to get away and get a little breather and support someone other than the recruits graduation Mm -hmm. groundhog's day every friday you know we got an opportunity to go to france for two weeks so that was awesome yeah um here in quantico it is more of a small ensemble focus so we have a ceremonial band which we do um like officer candidate graduations we have a like brass quintet support who support a lot of retirements at the National Marine Corps Museum. We have a party band. They support any place that has a big crowd or following holiday events. We have a rock band, uh, which is awesome. We're about to go play on the 16th of August at the Nationals game up in D.C. So that'll be fun. More of like platoon, you know, ceremonial stuff. But it's very small ensemble. So each band kind of has its own, you know, rhythm. So you, just... so you say rock band. Do y'all, uh, I got to ask. You know that song, what? Heard It in a Love Song, Marshall Tucker? It's my favorite flute moment in rock and roll. It's just an epic 
just i think the flautist gets like five solos of that song it's awesome that's amazing and just yeah you know so cool to dive into that aspect of the marine corps it's a fun job we're so lucky it's so fun just with like most jobs like it's not always 100 percent fun all the time but in my opinion i feel like i'm lucky like i'm i get to do what i love is music but then also be a marine at the same time and still do all the marine side of the stuff and train marines and you know mm -hmm. i'm very blessed and i'm very lucky that i had an opportunity that my life went this way instead of the way that it was on well we're very blessed to have people like you i promise and, i appreciate uh, that so i got two more questions for you you were deployed in iraq in 08 mm -hmm. um yes what is the hardest part of being deployed and kind of how do you i don't know stay strong while being away from loved ones family friends for me the hardest part was i am an only child so it's like it was just me my mom and my dad and so i struggled a lot like i really missed them because um you know we're just we're a very strong family it's 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 crazy but what got me through it were the marines that i i was with i would say i i really lean heavily on them and then to be honest like what else got me through like being out there and a lot of the things in the marine corps is my faith the support from spiritually and with my with my brothers and sisters so last question what is the best way to inquire about becoming a marine and then yeah outside of that how can we as civilians how can we support the Marine Corps, you know, in big and small ways? If you wanted to inquire about the Marine Corps, go talk to your local recruiter. Mm -hmm. Okay. And I would even suggest if you don't even know if you want to join the Marine Corps or if you don't even have a plan to join and you're just curious, still go talk to them. If anything, you're just going to learn about the opportunities, mm -hmm. the educational benefits, you know, travel, adventure, all that stuff. Mm -hmm. You don't know what you don't know until you go ask. I would say if you know of any veterans, really anybody from any branch, but, um, you know, speaking about the Marine Corps, if you know of any veterans, whether they're transitioning out from the Marine Corps or you see someone at church that you never talked to, but you know they were a veteran, you know, reach out to them and see how they're doing. See if they need anything. Invite them to the to the barbecue or or whatever. Just like involve them. Mm -hmm. Um if you know of a, of a Marine who's deployed or at a school or a Mew or something, and they're gone from their spouse, like months at a time, you know, reach out to them as well. If you know them, maybe, you know, bring them over a dinner or something. Or if you have kids, if you know them, watch their kids or something, but just reach out and just make sure that they're taken care of and involve the veterans, involve the Marines that are transitioning out of the Marine Corps, going from a Marine from 20 years back back to a, a civilian, because uh, that's that's pretty difficult. I'm not there yet, but I would I would think for me that would be more difficult mentally, more mentally than it would be physically. But that's that's what I would say, you know. Um, Absolutely. With the huge sacrifice that y'all make for us, I think that is the uh, least that we can do for y'all. So I, I hope everybody that's watching this hears that and does a little something about it. Last thing I want to say is just on behalf of everybody that's going to be watching this, thank you because you are such a hero and such a selfless hero to go out and to make the commitment to our country and to, and to our safety that you have. You know, not a day goes by where all of us don't thank God for people like you. So um, it, it just, it, it's an honor to get to talk to somebody like you and for you to take 45, 50 minutes out of your super busy day and super busy life. We, uh, we really appreciate it. Uh, and not a problem anytime. Um, you know, you have people will say, Oh, thank you. Thank you for your service. And you know, that means so much, like we hear it all the time and it, it means so much, but it also means so much to have support as well. Like it's not a one way street, you know, like, yeah, we raised our hand and whatever, but like we chose to do this, but through everything that I've learned and, and, you know, recruit training and the experiences that I've had, I have such a passion and love for this country, you know, and I, I would do anything for it. And to have the support, that means the world too. It's like, I need you too. You know, we're all in this together. We have to, uh, we got to jam sometime. If you ever, if you ever come <laughs> around Nashville, Tennessee, I will. My know. aunt lives there. My aunt lives oh, there. Yeah. I would love to do that. <laughs>